Hey guys, we are back with some more New Jersey Devils franchise mode, and in this one, we are going to continue with the year six offseason. As P.K. Subban in the last one retired, he became a coach, and hopefully we could get him on board as a coach. Now, the thing that we need to do before we go into free agency, I do want to go after Dante Fabro, as we saw in the last one. He's one of the best free agents available for this free agency class. Obviously, McAvoy is available, available, but we are not going to be able to afford him at all. He wants nearly $12 million dollars. And as you can see, our cap space, $6.5 million, that's not happening at all. But Dante Fabro, he only wants $6.3 million. Now, if we try to offer him right now, we can't offer him too much because we only have so much money. And I don't think that's going to work for Dante Fabro. He will definitely not accept only that much of a raise from what he wants. We're probably going to have to offer him, I would say, six point eight. And then we also need to sign some depth forwards because what we need to do here is we need to trade out someone who doesn't make a whole lot of money but enough to affect our chances at getting Dante Fabro, and that would be Dylan Dubé. He's, a, he's been a part of a pretty good fourth line, and he doesn't make too much money. He only makes two mil, but there is somebody who we have in our system that would be Vladimir Baikov who needs to make his appearance in the NHL. He's on an entry-level deal. We need to take advantage of that. And with the way things are right now, we really need a defenseman like Dante Fabro. As you can see by our slightly depleted defensive core, you have Slavin, Severson, Falk, Vukovic, Pesci, and then Lankow is number six currently. I don't feel comfortable playing Lankow, at least not as, as a 77 overall. So we are definitely going to have to trade Dubé here. And I could see potential cap issues going into this offseason, which is why I think guys like Paul Mary might be on his way out the next offseason, as well as maybe Justin Falk, who's on the last year of his deal, $6.1 million, and he's got that top six potential for a defenseman, and then as well, Paul Mary with the top nine forward potential. So we're going to try to find a trade for Dylan Dubé, and Boston wants him. They're a rebuilder, though. I could definitely see Carolina needing a Dylan Dubé. They do want him, and they have a pretty good team. So we will trade him here in exchange for... We'll try to get... Oh, we could definitely get a second round back for him. Let's try for a second, and let's try a third for next year. That'll probably go through. Proposed trade. There you go. So Dubé was pretty good for us, but that was merely a financial trade that we had to make because of, obviously, if we didn't do that trade, then we would not be able to sign Fabro. But now, we have a little bit more flexibility. We have 7.75 to work with, so that should be more than enough to offer for Fabro. And as I mentioned earlier, we will give him $6.8 million for three years, exactly what he wants, and a little bit more. So now what we also have to do in order to replace, or partially replace at least, uh, Dylan Dubé... We are going to sign Scott Wilson. He only wants roughly $1 million. He's a 79 overall, 33 years of age. He's obviously not as good as Dylan Dubé, but again, we had to make some cuts somewhere in order to get a bolster defense again. And I like Scott Wilson's history, even though the past two years haven't been great for him physically. Uh, the, the rest of the simulation shows him as a physical player. His ratio isn't great, but there's some things at these at least at this point that we're gonna have to pick and choose so scott wilson i will give him a contract for one year at 1.1 million dollars hopefully he signs for that and another guy who i want to go after as some cheap depth would be des guryanov he wants a two-way deal i believe so we are going to sign him to a one-year deal for 0.95 million dollars so now let us advance and see if we got all of our free agency targets so there is P.K. Subban. He has accepted our offer for our AHL associate coach role. And we have Scott Wilson. We have Des Gurianov. And we have Evan Fitzpatrick. And a trade. And Dante Fabro. There it is. So our defensive core is back to the way it needs to be in order to be a contending team. 
So now we will go over our roster and see what we have. So starting with goaltenders, you have Grubauer and Fitzpatrick. And then in the system, you have Wingles and Stahlberg and Karpainen. Defensemen, you have Fabro, Slavin, Falk, Severson, Vukojevic, and Pesci. And in the system, Jacobs, Lankow, Bernard. I'm expecting Lankow to grow a little bit, maybe to a 79. And in that case, maybe he could be a depth defenseman, a backup seventh defenseman. He could go between the AHL and the NHL. Although I would prefer him to play him in the AHL all year just to get him some more seasoning. Although, actually, I don't know if he'll, he might end up going back to the QMJHL. So we'll see what happens with Lankow. And then for forwards, you have Heizer, Hughes, Hall, Boakvist, Gusev, Palmieri, Bajan, Bellows, Brat, Lundell, Bykov, Gurianov, Wilson, and then Clark as a backup forward as well. There's Pushkarev in the minors. So one more thing I do want to get out of free agency before we move on is a backup defenseman who is making a minimal amount of money, such as Libor Hayek, who is only a 79 overall. He's asking for a minimum contract, so we will definitely give him this, but only for one year. And may as well give him a little bit more money since we're taking off a year that he wants two years. So offer contract to him. Uh, trade alert, we have two seconds to Carolina and to Washington. We have Alex Chason and Jake Gardner. And there's Libor Hayek. And another trade alert, to the Rangers, we have Colin Miller. And to Arizona, we have Kyle Turris and a third. So that is our offseason. We are now here at the start of the preseason of year number seven. So we will take a look at the growth that happened over the offseason. Grubauer and Fitzpatrick are still the same. Now, what about in the system? Wingles is a 79 now, so he's getting very, very close. I would say by the end of this year, he'll be ready to at least take over the backup position, or and maybe even sometime in the middle of the year. And then on defense, you have Fabro, Slavin, Falk, and Severson. Not necessarily in that order. Vukovic, Pesci, and Hayek. And in the system, you have Jacobs, White, Bernard, Grillo, and Perot. And forwards, you have Heischer, Hughes, Hall, Boquist, Gusev, Palmieri, Bajan, Brat, Bellows, Lundell. Bykov grew to an 82, so he should be a third-line scorer based off that. So we'll see uh, what play role he has, because currently it's depth forward, but that's not exact. And even sometimes when it's exact, it's it's not really exact. And then there's Gurianov, there's Wilson, and then in the... In the system, you have Clark, Solani, Studenich, Zetterland, Pushkarev, who looks like he didn't grow at all. He's still a 75 overall. That is unfortunate. Pakula, Pierce, Dietz, Kulp, Burkoff. So our lines, we have Hall, Hughes, and Bratt on the first line. And actually, I think it was Hall on the right last year. Yeah, and there was Bratt on the left wing. And then Boquist, Nico, and Goose. Then you have Bajan, Lundell, and Bellows. So the top nine is the same. But then you have Wilson, Bykov and Paul Mary. Now, obviously, the fourth line last year was very good, but we had to make some financial cuts. And as a result, we have Wilson and Bykov in there instead of Dubé and Zaka. And on defense, you have Slavin and Fabro, Vukojevic and Falk, and then Pesci and Severson. And on the power play, you have Heischer, Hughes, Hall, Bykov, and Falk, and then Gusev, Bogvis, Brat, Bajan, and Slavin. Four man power play is pretty much the same. And on the penalty kill, you have Nico, Paul Mary, Severson, and Fabro, and then Lundell, Bajan, Vukojevic, and Slavin. Now, I believe this is the first time that we've had plus threes on both of our penalty kill units, so that should be interesting to see how the penalty kill produces this year, offensively and defensively. May get some short-handed goals in there with the plus three on both lines. Then you have Nico, Fabro, and Severson, Lundell, Slavin, and Vukojevic for the three-man penalty kill. And then on the four on four, you have Hughes, Hall, Fabro, and Slavin, Nico, Gusev, Falk, and Severson, and then Bokvist, Paul Mary, Pesci, and Vukojevic. Then on the three on three, you have Hughes, Hall, and Falk, Nico, Gusev, and Slavin, Bokvist, Paul Mary, and Fabro, and the extra attackers, Nico and Hughes. Shootout, Hughes, Hall, Nico, Gusev, and Boquist. And in goal, of course, you have Grubauer and Fitzpatrick. Scratched are Gurianov and Hayek. And now we will take a look at the growth for guys who are unsigned. So Caden Lankow didn't grow too much, only to a 78 overall. Hopefully he sees more growth in the QMJHL this year. Brewers a 65, Martikainen 64, 
Clarkson is a 63, and then Parks is a 62, the high elite goaltender. So we'll see what he turns into throughout the rest of the GM mode. So now I believe that is all that we need to do for our preseason preparation. Let us just check the jersey numbers. So you, uh, new numbers, you have Bykov, who is 32. You have Wilson, who is 20. You have Gurianov, who is 34. You have Hayek, who is 43. You have Fabro, who is 57. And you have Fitzpatrick, who's 33. So we're here at the end of the preseason, and we are just in the stat screen to check on one player and one player only. That would be Mr. Vladimir Baikov. He had one assist in seven games play, minus three. Uh, what were his defensive stats like? He had a 48% on faceoffs, two hits, uh, two takeaways, and one giveaway. All right, nothing special, but we'll see how he simulates throughout the season. And he is indeed a third-line scoring forward, so I'm glad that we put him on the power play, get him some extra minutes. He's currently getting 1046 of ice time. I think that sounds about right for him. He's uh, just breaking into the league, getting used to North American hockey still. That's, that's about right for him. So now starting year number seven, let's see what the first month brings us. And unfortunately, it brings us an injury to Taylor Hall. And surprise, surprise, it's an injured knee. Until November 7th, you hate to see it. But at least that's not too long from now. That is only about a week, actually. We're at the very end of October. So we will replace him for right now. I will put Paul Mary on the first line. And instead of Paul Mary on the fourth line, we will have Gurianov. So after one month, we are currently 6-7 and seven after 13 games. Uh, I'm not in panic mode yet. We're still sitting outside the playoffs, but not by much. So, I mean, obviously the record isn't pretty, but it, it's no reason to panic. I mean, obviously it's not, again, the greatest start. But, you know, we have a, some new players on this team. It could just be a shaky start. We've seen this plenty of times in the past where... A team will not be so great in the beginning part of the season, especially a veteran team like us. And then in the next few months, we just go on a tear. So we had a win against Minnesota for the first win of the season. Then you have a few losses here with Toronto, Vegas, Arizona, uh, Philly. We won against Pittsburgh and Chicago. Then you have a win against Anaheim. A few losses in a row with Buffalo, Winnipeg, and Edmonton. And then you have two wins in a row with Vegas and San Jose. So we are when we're winning, we're winning big, as we can see. Uh, six nothing win, six two win, five nothing win. So we know for a fact that our goal scoring is appears to be uh, in a pretty good spot, as we can see here by Nico over a point per game, seventeen points in thirteen games. We may as well check out the points for the rest of our guys. Hughes over a point per game. Same thing for Boquist. Gusev and Hall nearly point per game. Bratt with 10. Then you have Falk with 8. Bykov with 7. Bajan with 6. Slavin with 6. Wilson with 4. Palmieri with 4. Severson with 3. Vukovic with 3. Fabro with 3. Lundell with 3. Pesci with 2. Bellows with 2. And then in goal, you have Gubar with a 904 save percentage and Fitzpatrick a 919. So the, uh, the Vesna Trophy winner, not off to a great start, but hopefully he can pick it up in the coming months. But let's see if there's anything we can do about our special teams. So we will check out the team stats here. Goals for per game, yeah, as expected, we're up there, 3.46. Goals against per game, it's actually not too bad. We're at a 2.85. It's just there's a lot of other teams ahead of us right now that they're going to probably, more than likely, based off what we've seen so far uh, in this GM mode, We'll come back down to earth, so uh, I'm not worried about that right now. Power play, it's looking pretty good, 23.3. Penalty kill, looking very good, actually. So there's nothing much we really need to change. I think, you know, we, we've had some pretty good success with the goals against per game, the goals for per game, and the power play and penalty kill. So we really just, I think we've been unlucky, and it's just a mix of unlucky and new players and a slightly struggling goaltenders to start the season. So those are all things that I think can correct themselves. So we will go another month here in the simulation. And Taylor Hall is back as well, so that will also help. Boy, Taylor Hall injured again with a mild concussion until November 23rd. But luckily, that's only a few days away from now. But still, you hate to see uh, two injuries to a single player this early on in the season, especially in a contract year. That's a brutal one. Obviously, it's not for too long, but still for his own personal success with his, at least as far as renewing his contract goes, he, he may start to look a little fragile at this point in his career. And we have to 
we may have to take that into consideration when uh, renewing him this offseason. And now he is back. He only missed a few games, but still, those were a couple of games that we lost. Well, we uh, we started out November pretty well. <laughs> we had a 2-1 win, and then a 4-3 overtime win, 2 nothing win, and then it's pretty much downhill from there. Three losses in a row, including a shootout loss. Then you have a win, a loss, a loss, a loss, a loss, a loss, a shootout win, and a loss. We are 11-15-1, and, and I believe we only had five wins in that month. Let's see, one, two, three. Yeah, we went five, eight, and one in that month. And we are 11-15-1, and, and I believe we are actually in double digits behind the playoff spot. Oh my goodness, yeah. Yeah, this isn't good. <laughs> this is not good whatsoever. And we are also seven points behind the Sabres. This is not good. So we're going to see what's gone wrong here in the team stats. Uh, first of all, it looks like our goals uh, for have dried up. Uh, goals against per game. It stayed relatively consistent with where it was. The power play has also dried up. And the penalty kill is a little bit worse than it was before. It is now at an 82% compared to an 86 so we definitely have to fix our offense somehow. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to do that, but we'll think about changing the lines here. As we take a look at the player stats, you have Heischer with 29 points. He has been rolling all season. Same thing for Hughes, for Boquist as well. Gusev, he's slowed down a little bit, 19 points. Hall really slowed down. Well, actually, he's still, given that he missed a few games with injury, he's still on pace for, I would say, 70 points. He has 18 points in 23 games. If that was 18 points in 27 games, that's a little bit different. But he's still uh, pretty close to point per game. Uh, Bayesian with 14 points and a minus 14. You hate to see it. Oh, that's a rough mi minus right there. Uh, Bratt with 13 points. Falk with 12. Bykov with 11. Lundell with 10. And a minus 12. That third line looking like a yike so far. Yeah. That third line is a yikes right now. A minus 10 for Bellows as well. Eight points for Slavin. Seven points for Bellows and Paul Mary. Six for Severson and Vukovic. Five for Wilson and Fabro. Three for Pesci. Two for Guryanov in four games. And for goaltenders, you have Grubauer with a 905 save percentage. Three shutouts. Nine wins, 11 losses, and one overtime loss. And for Fitzpatrick, a 919 in six games. So there's got to be more to this. Let's take a look at the defensive stats for all of our players. So face-offs, we'll start out with our centers. Heischer with a 55.3. Hughes with a 53.8. Lundell with a 52.4. And Bykov is actually not doing too shabby either with a 51.9. So it's definitely not for a lack of possession that we're losing that we're losing games, right? Because we're not losing face-offs too often. Let's check hits. You have Heischer and Hughes. They're laying the body a lot. 46 hits each. Then you have Bayesian with 37. Hall with 36. 32 for Bellows. 28 for Paul Mary. 20 for Wilson. 14 for Lundell. 13 for Bratt. 13 for Bokvist. 11 for Gusev. Bykov has 9. Gurianov has 3. I think that might be part of the problem is that we don't have, seem to have a ton of physicality this year. We have... We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players, seven forwards that are under a hit per game. And then you have Palmieri, Bellows, Hall, Bajan, Hughes, and Heischer as the ones that are laying the body the most. And we will check the defensive ratios for takeaways and giveaways. Heischer is great. Bajan's great. Hughes is great. Hall is great. Lundell's great. Brat could be better. Gusev could be a lot better. Wilson could be better. Bykov could be better. Paul Mary could be better. Bokus could be a lot better. Holy moly. <laughs> 9 to 23. And 6 to 15 from Bellows could be a lot better. 1 to 1 for Gurianov. And for defensemen, we all know the ratios are going to be pretty bad, but let's at least check the physicality that's going on back here on the defensive end. So you got Slavin with 55 hits. You got Fabro with 48. Vukojevic with 39, Severson with 28, Falk with 22, and Pesci with 20. So there's no shortage of physicality on the back end. Let's check their ratios. You have Slavin. He's good. We're looking for that 2 to 1 ratio for giveaways to takeaways. And Slavin has better than a 2 to 1 ratio, which 
which is what we're looking for. Uh, Fabro has a 7 to 11, so that's good. A 7 to 20 for Vukovic could be better. Severson, uh, that's good. 6 to 14. 5 to 11 for Pesci. That's, uh, that's basically what I expect of him. And Falk, unfortunately, with 4 to 21, that is brutal. Uh, luckily, he is getting offense to make up for it. But, uh, you hate to see that. That's that's brutal. And it appears that Hall actually got re-injured again <laughs> at the end of that month. As you see on, in his morale, 11-30-2025, lost morale for being injured. Now, he wasn't injured completely. He's still playable. But that is the third time this year that he has been injured, and it is only December 1st. That is rough. <laughs> That is extremely rough. He's looking very fragile in his old age right now, 34 years of age. I mean, he's got the durability up there at 70, but I don't know how sustainable that's going to be for Taylor Hall as he's already had three injuries this year. So we're going to shuffle the lines up a little bit. Brat has not really been playing up to expectations. He's a minus seven, only 11 assists and two goals when he's playing alongside of Hughes and Hall. So we are going to put him on the third line. We're going to see how Beijing does on the first line because he has 14 points on the third line. And obviously that third line has been horrible defensively for some reason <laughs> with, you know, the minus 14, minus 12, minus 10. So that line has to be shaken up no matter what. Bellows it looks like he's having a rough go so far. So we are going to put him on the fourth line and then Paul Mary on the third line. We got to shake something up about that third line. So we'll try Brat, Lundell, and Paul Mary. And then on the fourth line, you have Wilson, Bykov, and Bellows. And the second line, I believe, remains untouched. Gusev, unfortunately, is struggling a little bit, but not as much as the third line was and not as much as Brat was. So we decided to leave the second line untouched. So we'll see how Bajan, Hughes, and Hall does on the first line. And something's probably got to change defensively as well. So it appears that pair of Vukovic and Falk hasn't been too hot. Minus three and minus five. You have a minus one for Pesci, plus two for Severson. And for Slavin and Fabro, they're plus two and plus seven. So Slavin and Fabro haven't been the problem. It looks like maybe Falk and Vukovic could use a shakeup. So what I'll do, I'll get Pesci with Falk and then Vukovic with Severson. And Grubauer, you're just going to have to... You're, you're the Vesna Trophy winner, man. You're going to have to p power through it. You expect... A little bit more out of your starting goaltender, especially out of a Vesna Trophy winner at this point. So he's got to put together a couple of really good bonds here if we want to get back in the chase. Because we are, I believe, as we last checked, I believe we are, yeah, we're 12 points behind the Rangers who are in the first wildcard spot. And they also have two games in hand. So <laughs> it's going to be a climb. It is going to be a climb getting back into the playoffs. And honestly... The Rangers are 15-5-5. Five and five. That's going to be pretty hard to catch as we are currently 11-15-1. <laughs> they have a significant advantage on us. If we go another month like this, I don't think we're making the playoffs. I really don't. Oi. Actually, you know what? We're. I meant to change up the power play, so we are definitely going to change up the power play as well. Oh, yeah. That second line power play has been dead. Brat has two power play points. Pokvist has two. Uh, Gusev has one. Oh man. Slavin, what about him? He has one power play point. Bajan has two. Yeah, that second power play unit's been dead. What about the first line power play? I'd imagine they'd be getting more. Yeah, seven for Nico. For Hughes, I'd imagine he has somewhere around the same. He, ha he has 10. Hall has five. Bykov, what does he have? He has two power play points. And for Falk, he has four. So we need to change something about that second line power play up. You know what? We'll get Brat back with Hughes and Hall on the power play, and then it'll be Nico, Boquist, and Gusev here on the second line, just so we can get something going about that second unit. And I think we'll switch up Falk and Slavin. And for the four-man power play, we'll put Heischer with Boquist and then Gusev with Hughes and Hall. Just got to mix something up here because we are currently not in a good spot at all. So what we are going to do in December here, we are going to go a few games at a time, but we are not going to skip through the month because this is going to be a really uh, key month for us as obviously we've had a pretty bad record up to this point. And if that continues, especially with this roster, 
we may can have to consider making a coaching change. So we are going to closely follow this team uh, throughout this month. And there's the first head coach firing of the year. Speaking of which, the Nashville Predators have fired their head coach, Dominic Sekaraz. So uh, we have a 5-2 win there against Buffalo and against Montreal. Uh, Dante Fabro pff, injured with my concussion until December 17th. That's great. So we are going to have to replace him. A 2-1 win against Montreal, so we're starting to play a little bit better, but we're still we're playing catch-up. And it's going to be really tough to get ourselves back into a position where we are uh, competing with the Rangers for that final wild card spot because the Sabres, they look pretty good. Uh, the Penguins, actually the Rangers, they've climbed all the way up to first and we are now competing with the Penguins for the wild card spot. So Vancouver and Calgary, we have three wins in a row, but we need to go on a real nice winning streak here. So make it a couple wins here against Vancouver and Calgary. There's a win against Vancouver. There's a loss against Calgary. That is all right to lose once in a while, but we need to go on another significant winning streak here. So Dante Fabro is back. We will definitely get him back in the lineup. We need all of our best players at this point. Hayek, get out, and Fabro, get in. San Jose, we have a one nothing loss. Ooh, that's brutal. That definitely hurts. And against Ottawa and the Islanders, we have, please, a couple of wins. A couple of wins. Scott Wilson is injured. I think that's just going to replace Gurianov in there. And I think Wilson is only on the fourth line, so we'll just replace player. And Ottawa, a shootout loss and a 7-1 win against the Islanders. So I'm not sure exactly what to make of this team. I guess we'll go up until after the game against Nashville because we're playing better for the most part, but we're still losing a few key games. There's a win against Washington, 3-1. to one. Minnesota, you have a 3 nothing win. Scott Wilson's back. I'll leave him out for right now. And against Nashville, 6-1 to one loss. Uh, we're still... See, we, we got ourselves in a really bad hole because even with all those wins... We're still currently eight points out of a playoff spot. I mean, there's there's the Canadians over here in the Atlantic, but even they, they have 45 points. We're seven points behind the Canadians. It's going to be tough. It's going to be real tough to get back into a playoff position. We put ourselves with that. We put ourselves in a really bad hole early, uh, just like we did in this year in the, in the real NHL. Oh, my goodness. So again, we actually weren't even that bad this month. We, in fact, we were pretty good. We had a seven three and one record, so we're back up to eighteen eighteen and two. But with the hole that we put ourselves in, it's just it's going to make it super hard to get back, to get back into the race. So I, I'm not giving up yet. It's still possible, for sure. But we need to not go on any extended losing streak for the rest of the season. We cannot afford any kind of losing streak because it's only. I mean, we're only in January and we have 18 losses at this point. I would say if we don't go above 500 for the rest of the year, then we are, we're definitely not getting into the playoffs. If ugh, This month is going to be key. This month is going to be key. If we don't have another month like we just had, then we're done. So let's check the team stats out here. Goals for per game, we're actually... Almost last in our division with a 2.87. And then goals against per game. The, the funny thing is, we're not scoring goals, but we're not letting them in either, apparently. So, Grubauer must have one of the better save percentages in the uh, current in the division currently. And power play, we are the worst with a 14.7. You absolutely hate to see it. That's probably a lot worse than a 14.7 as well currently. It's probably like a 10% or maybe even lower. So we definitely need to fix the power play and the penalty kill. It, it looks, it's been stable. It hasn't been, you know, great, but it's been stable. So I'm not going to mess with the penalty kill at all, but the power play, def we definitely have to change the power play. Bayesian currently has 22 points. Hughes, he is above a point per game, I believe, or if not close to it. Yeah, it's actually, he's not above, but he's close to it. Hall, he is, for the amount of games that he's played, he's actually on a pretty good pace right now. He has 28 points in 34 games. He's still on pace for about 70 points, so it's not like he's having a bad season. But he is dropping in potential, and he has gotten injured a few times this year already. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on going into the trade deadline. Boakvist, he's having a good year, 30 points in 38 games. Uh, Nico, he's having a real good year. He's over a point per game so far. Uh, Gusev, Gusev's been slow. 
Gusev has been real slow. 14 goals. He's only had three goals since we last checked. 23 points in 38 games. He is slowing down for sure. Hey, it's not like he's even being physical. He's not really taking away the puck either. Yeah, we might have to consider trading Gusev. As much as I like him, because he's, you know, he's obviously had a very good history so far in this GM mode. But right now, he is just, ooh, brutal. Uh, Jasper Bratt, he has been unfortunate. Unfortunately bad as well. 17 points in 38 games compared to what he usually gets. 61 points per season usually. So I don't know what to say there. A couple of underachievers, massive underachievers in Bratt and Gusev. Lundell, I mean, th this is kind of what we expect from it. him at this point. He's usually on this pace. As a matter of fact, he's on a better pace than what he was last season. So this is, this is the norm for him at this point. We kind of expect this. He's a good defensive player. He's doing what we expect out of him. Paul Mary, he's having a slow run as well. Four goals and nine assists. Ugh. Gurianov, let's see, he's four points in eight games. Uh, Bellows, ten points as well. Yeah, yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Baikov with 16 points, so he's having a pretty good rookie year. But unfortunately, that doesn't really make up for the amount of underachievers we have. Gusev, Brat, Paul Mary, uh, Bellows as well. And then Hall's getting injured a lot. I mean, obviously, he's only missed four games, but still, there's three injuries, you know, so that's kind of concerning, especially for someone his age. And uh, we, we take a look at the defensive core. You have Slavin with 10 points plus two. You have Fabro with seven points plus 13. Pesci with eight points plus four. Falk minus four with 16 points. Vukovic six points plus two. And plus five for Severson with seven points. And then goaltenders, you have Grubauer with a 909. So Grubauer is actually doing very well right now. And so is Fitzpatrick, 933 in 11 games. I think it's mainly our goal scoring, our, our depth goal scoring that's dried up. So I think I'm going to end it here. So let me know what you guys think we should do. Should we throw the season already? Because we're 10 points back of Carolina and we're 7 points back of the Canadians. It's technically possible that we could get back into it, but it's, it's going to be a climb. We would need, we would pretty much need a few more months like we just had. We would need January, February, March, and April all to be like months that we just had with the 7 3 and 1 month in December. Because if we go, let's say, 5 and 5 in January and February, we're not making it. There's no chance. There's absolutely no chance that we make it with those kinds of months with with a 500 record for pretty much the rest of the season there's no way i mean even if we go on that kind of run that we just had in december throughout the rest of the year we even still may, may not make it so it's gonna be tough it's gonna be a real tough climb to the playoffs and i want to know what you guys think who should we trade if we need to make any trades because at this point it's looking like we may have to, especially with a couple of underachievers. Because again, it's not like we're struggling on faceoffs either. As a matter of fact, we are dominating on faceoffs. Nico at almost a 57%. Then you have Baikov at almost a 54. Hughes at a, almost a 54 as well. And then Lundell at a 53%. All of our main faceoff takers, they are winning faceoffs like crazy. So it's not for a lack of possession that we're losing games. You know, it's just we for some reason can't score. It could be that we're not opening up enough space physically. I mean, you have guys like Heischer, Hughes, Bajan, Hall, Palmieri, Bellows. They're all laying the body. But then Wilson as well, he's getting paid to be a physical presence down there on the fourth line. And he's, even he isn't really being that physical. You have Boquist with 19 hits, Lundell 19, Gusev 18, Brat 16, Baikov with 13, and Gurianov with 9 in, in 8 games. You have Heischer, Bajan. Hughes, Lundell, Hall, all with great ratios. Bratt could be a lot better. Baikov, Wilson could be better as well. Gustav, really. Uh, those ratios, too. Mm -hmm. We may seriously have to consider trading Gustav. He is just not working out for whatever reason this year. Paul Mary could be better. Bocas could be a lot better as well, 13 to 30. Uh, Bellows could be a lot better as well. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of things this year. That could be a lot better and should be a lot better. So what do we do? Do we fire our coach? Do we make a trade or two? Because this seat, we're running out of time. We are running out of time. January is going to be a deciding factor for this team. Again, if we don't have the kind of run that we did in December, 
then we're just we're we're not making the playoffs. I'm calling it right there. We're not making the playoffs if we don't go at least like two wins for every loss, you know, or even three wins for every loss. It's going to need to be a stellar second half of the season. I'll just say that. So I'll end it off here and let me know what you guys think we should do. And I'll see you guys in the next one when we hopefully complete the year seven regular season. (laughs) 